There is literally nothing that we can beat the Prophet ﷺ with in terms of Ihsan. We started off the series with talking about how the right of the Muslim on the Muslim is that you pray janaz on them, that you visit them. And you think about loyalty and courtesy and just the, the way the Prophet ﷺ was so dedicated to those that were dedicated to him. And just like he did with that Abyssinian woman, one of my favorite narrations about the Prophet ﷺ is actually in the final chapter of his life where the Prophet ﷺ chooses before his final illness to make two last trips. And I'm not including the masjid in that because we know that in the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he would try to go to the masjid as much as he could until his health would no longer allow him to. But his last two trips, alayhi salatu wasalam, were to go to Uhud and to visit the shuhada of Uhud and to seek forgiveness for them and make dua for them. And then his final trip in the hadith of Abu Muwayhiba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a very famous narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, I was commanded to seek forgiveness for Ahl al baqir for the people of the Baqir. So he goes out to the graveyard in the Baqir and he seeks forgiveness for his companions in the Baqir. Such a beautiful testimony to his character, alayhi salatu wasalam, and setting the example for us. So he makes those last two trips to them to seek forgiveness for them, giving us that insight into how often we should visit our loved ones and how often we should make dua for them. Now, a lot of times the question comes up, can they hear me when I go? Do they feel me when I go? And I want us to talk about this for a bit, inshallah. Now, obviously, with the Prophet Wasallam, he has angels that roam the earth that deliver our salam to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no matter where we are, whether we're in Medina or in Texas or Morocco or wherever, you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it will reach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is obviously something that is for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For us, when we go to the graveyards, what do we say? Think about the dua that we make, and it has various iterations. Assalamu alaikum ahl al-diyar, min al-mu'minina wal-muslimin. You say, peace be on to you, O inhabitants of the grave, from the believers and from the Muslims. So you're giving a general salam to everyone in the graveyard. Wa inna insha'allahu bikum lahiqun, And we are soon to follow. Ant musabiqun, you are the forerunners. Wa inna insha'allahu bikum lahiqun. And again, there are various iterations of this hadith. So you are the forerunners, you have preceded us, and we are soon to follow. Nas'alullahana wa lakumul afia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for us and for you. So you're really talking directly to them in that sense, right? You're addressing the salam to them as you go into the graveyard. We know, of course, when we go to visit the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we say, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. We send salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then salam to Abu Bakr, and then salam to Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. And you find, by the way, with Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, it's a beautiful uh, narration that when Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma would go to greet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar, it's different for him. Why? Because Umar radiallahu anhu is his father. So what would he say? He would say, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. And then he would move over and he would say, As-salamu alayka ya Abu Bakr. And then he would move over and say, As-salamu alayka ya Abati. Peace be unto you, my dear father, subhanAllah. So this is a beautiful thing, obviously, that belongs to the children of Abu Bakr and Umar when they would move past uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr and Umar. So the question becomes once again, what is the value of going? What is the value of saying salam? Can they hear the salam? Can they feel our presence? The practice of visiting the graveyard was actually late in legislation. The Prophet ﷺ actually said that, Inni al-qubur. I used to forbid you from visiting the graves. But then the Prophet ﷺ said, visit because it reminds you of death. Why do I think this is so important in this discussion? Because it's not like they need us to visit them. Meaning what? You know, with the Prophet ﷺ, our salam, our salam reaches him wherever. And of course, that's something only for the Prophet ﷺ. But with everybody, your du'as, or at least those again, on whose behalf, people of, of Iman, on whose behalf good deeds are continued, your du'as still count for them wherever you are. Your du'a at the graveyard is not better than your du'a at home. 
your good deeds that you do on their behalf. That can be anywhere, right? And they're far more in need of that than anything else. And that's to give us perspective that the only reason the prohibition of visiting the graves was lifted was for our benefits, not those that are the occupants of the graves, but those that visit the graves to remind themselves of death. However, remember when Amr ibn As was passing away and he told his children to wait a bit. So I can be comforted by your presence uh, until the messengers of my Lord come to me. There are narrations that seem to match with what Amr ibn As is saying that when a believer goes to visit their brother or sister in the graveyard, that they feel their presence and they respond to their salam. But again, even if those narrations are debatable among some of the scholars. The point is that we go to say salam regardless to them. We go to make dua, we go to remind ourselves of death, knowing that dua and good deeds will reach them wherever they may be. So what can we establish in regards to the hearing of the dead? We know that they don't hear everything on earth. And so they're not like the living in that they can roam and be in your you know room and wherever they may be and hear everything that's still going on in this dunya but how much can they hear in their place, in their graves right now? What we can establish is actually from the Sunnah of the Prophet first and foremost in regards to the Janazah itself, that the Prophet mentioned that the person hears the last footsteps leaving the Janazah. There's also the Hadith in the aftermath of the Battle of Badr, that after the disbelievers died, the Prophet said, Ya Fulan ibn Fulan, he started to call out to them one by one, those that were the enemies of Islam. And he said, Oh Fulan, oh so and so, the son of so and so, oh so and so, the son of so and so, oh so and so, the son of so and so. Hal wajattu ma wa'adakum rabbukum haqqa, fa inni wajattu ma wa'adani lahu haqqa. That have you found what Allah has promised you to be true? Because we have certainly found what Allah has promised us to be true. And when the Prophet said that, they asked the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, can they hear what you're saying? And the Prophet said that you cannot hear any better than what they are hearing. So Allah certainly caused them to hear what the Prophet was saying to them. So what's the conclusion of all of this? The conclusion is they will hear what Allah wants them to hear. Allah will cause them to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes them to hear. Your deeds can still reach them. Your du'as can still reach them. And certainly there is a plethora of evidence primary and secondary that establishes this idea of going to the graveyard when we say salam to them. We don't ask them to do things for us. We don't ask them to make dua for us. None of that, but that there is some comfort and some connection with the salam to them. And there's certainly an increased comfort with the du'as and the good deeds that you send on their behalf.